Evening folks and welcome to this demonstration of my Seiko 6139-6002 automatic chronograph watch. Uh, this is a watch from 1972 and it uh, had a, a bit of space history to it, not this particular watch but this particular model of watch. It's also known as the Pogue Seiko and um, it was the first automatic chronograph worn in space uh, by a Colonel William Pogue who uh, was on the Skylab 4 mission in 1973. So a watch like this was worn in space for 83 days in, on Skylab and uh, it, he proved in that mission that an automatic watch would work in space. Um, prior to that NASA had been using, and in fact they still still were at that point, the official NASA, NASA watch for space missions was the Omega Speedmaster. Um, I think some people may have thought that an automatic watch wouldn't self-wind in zero gravity because it relies on a rotor to wind the spring, but uh, Colonel Pogue reported that it, he never needed to do anything to wind it up. It worked normally. Um, and he used some of the unique features of this watch for timing engine burns on that Skylab mission. So I'll just show you some of the features of the watch. Um, first things first, you can see around the outside of the bezel it's got a tachymeter scale, which um, the way that works, you time um, something for you time a, a given distance, uh, normally a mile or a kilometer, and it'll tell you how many of those miles per hour you were doing. Um, so, for instance, if you manage to do a mile in 30 seconds, you're doing 120 miles an hour. Pretty, pretty self-explanatory. And this has got a very nice sort of. It's got the red and the blue part of the um, tachymeter bezel, and normally, as you go faster and faster, the numbers up here would go higher and higher and higher um, and that's what the red portion is here to show that it, it kind of if you're timing something it goes beyond 60 seconds you start it starts going into the, the lower speeds so if something's taking uh, 72 seconds there you're actually doing 52 miles an hour if, if it's miles you're timing whereas a lot of normal watches it just goes up and up and up to quite impossible speeds which um, wouldn't be accurate to measure so that's why that bit's red that's showing beyond a second and the blue bits are less than a second and that's timed by this uh, red second hand there, which you'll notice is stationary at the moment because that's only used for the chronograph and there's no separate second hand for the watch. Uh, it just should got the hours and the minutes there. It also shows the day and the date. And uh, I'll, it's got one other function, which is this rotating inner bezel. So you, you turn the crown like this and it rotates the inner bezel. So that's another thing you can used for timing events and apparently that's what Colonel Poe used for timing engine burns was the rotating bezel. Um, so it's a nice chunky watch, good size even by modern standards and um, I'll just demonstrate the chronograph here. So that's it starting, stopping and resetting. Um, the other thing, interesting thing about this watch is how you set the date. It's got a quick set date, so and that's operated by pressing the crown in. So if you push it in slightly, it's changing the day, the, the date. And if you push it in harder, it changes the day of the week. And it's got two date wheels on it. It's got a, an Arabic one and uh, an English one. So that's it. The uh, Seiko 6139-6002 from uh, 1972. Uh, Colonel Pogue bought his in, uh, in 1972 and he paid $71.50 um, for it. Uh, they go for a, about sort of $300 or £200 these days um, and it's a very nice watch indeed from the 70s. I hope you've enjoyed this one. Cheerio!